Hi everyone to uh, another edition of Mix It Up. Um, today, the topic, chat, GPT, Copilot AI, and what it means for Business Central. And um, we have a really a panel of MVPs to talk about this. Um, so this is gonna be a great conversation. So I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna get right to the drink and we'll see if I can speed make this drink. It's a little bit like playing Chopped at my house right now. I haven't been home for a while, so eh, some of these ingredients may or may not be right um, or what it says up here. So just pretend along with me. So I had Chad GPT pick the drink. Um, it is a watermelon basil margarita. I'm gonna preface this with, I never usually put weeds in my drinks, so basil is not making it into this drink. Um, so the ingredients are two cups of fresh watermelon, uh, basil, two ounces of tequila, one ounce of triple sec, one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. We don't have that either. Um, one tablespoon, one teaspoon of agave syrup, salt or sugar for rimming the glass, ice cubes, watermelon slices, etc. So one really cool trick I learned recently, if you want to rim a glass um, really easily, kind of cut down here on the line and then cut like, I don't know, about a fourth of it. I don't know where that piece just went, it's somewhere on the floor. Um, so you have like kind of a little notch. And then when you take your glass, you've got the little notch and it just kind of rims your glass with the lime juice. So you can roll it in the salt or whatever you have for your drink. I actually have some tahini and I mixed it with a little margarita salt. So we'll put that on the rim. Yeah, that's not working so well on this glass because this is the only glass I can find. So and it is what it is. So I'm going to put some ice in here. Um, and then one thing I did ahead of time, so you guys wouldn't have to listen to the blender, is I did blend the, uh, the watermelon first. So the watermelon goes into a shaker. I also cannot find my shaker today. So uh, this is a uh, handy day shaker. We'll pretend it's going to work well for us. I have no idea how this is going to work. So put the lid on, shake it up. Oh. I forgot all the other stuff. So let's put tequila in. What did it say? Two ounces of tequila. I'm going to bet that about three or four ounces go in this by the time I get this <laughs> bottle open. Oof. So this is just silver, 1800. That's what I had. So we'll just pour that in there. Oh, yeah, that's way more than two ounces. I know I'm going to go off camera later. Um, and then like an ounce of lime juice. Not really sure how old that is, so this could be interesting. And then some agave syrup. Like just a teaspoon, it says. So I'm afraid this is going to be one of those mix it up where we keep checking on you. Are you OK, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. So I'm going to shake it in my shaker. Pour it in my glass. We're gonna see how this tastes. I mean, it smells good. That makes a lot. But yeah, I can smell the tequila in this one. This <laughs> one's it's gonna be a good mix it up today. <laughs> Bottom up. I'm bad. I can drink these. So cheers, everyone. Right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Get right to it then. Um, today's panel. We'll get to it as soon. Oh, there it goes. Uh, today's panel, I'm going to let the speakers introduce themselves, even though they probably need no introduction. So if we just want to go in order, Eric, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Uh, I'm Eric. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's enough in reality. You're from Canada. You I'm have a really uh, cool tool for APIs to get data out. If you're interested, just being his name, it'll pop up. Todd, uh, um, the simple and, and, object and, designer. And, and I, I pay Belinda to be my uh, promotional agent. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know I know everyone on the panel pretty well, so yeah, I can. Yeah. You want to do the introduction? Well, yeah, go, go, go ahead, ahead Belinda. Go for it, Belinda. All right. And next yeah. up, we have the lovely Kristen Hossman. 
from she is the owner of Mount Evans Consulting. She lives in Colorado. Um, an interesting fun fact about her, she drives a motorcycle that's twice as big as she is for fun. So lovely Kristen. She is a um, quite a jack of dynamic trade. So let's give it up for Kristen. Yay. Um, there's me. I'm Belinda. Oh, look at that. Yay. Awesome. Um, I'm uh, I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I look a wreck now because we're in the middle of moving houses, starting new schools for my granddaughter, and I'm going on vacation tomorrow. So I'm just kind of like, Ooh. so um, just ignore anything weird that comes up out of my house. And then the lovely Christoph Belois from Poland, Warsaw, Poland, right? Yeah, correct, correct. Yes. Um, he, uh, I don't think he has done it for a while, but he had a beer and our every Friday talking about uh, Business Central developing, and I miss those a lot. So um, I know, though, he has been crazy busy like everyone else, but he is quite amazing in what he does with the community. So everybody give it up for Christoph. Yay! Yeah, there they go. All the hearts and everything. Yay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> OK. So already I swallowed salt wrong. So that we're off to a good start. So Eric, you maybe want to give a brief overview. Of what AI chat GPT kind of high level for everybody, what it is. Well, I, I think so. So. You know, if you if you read the, the 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 press, not even the tech press, but just the general press, you get you know, you get the impression this this is the this is the end of the world. This is uh, this is all sort of things that, in reality, it's not. Um, it 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 it's so so back in 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 the nineties. There was you know, one of the buzzwords uh, was a neural network, uh, which is 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 a simulation of what goes on in our brain that we have neurons and 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 they are connected uh, and, and and you know you have connections that are strong you have connections that are weak, so we simulated that in software um, and we we trained this network to to that that. If we give the network this input, we want this output, uh, and 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 so we, you you train the network to uh, to understand that if this is the input I'm giving, then this is the output, and then you kept training it with more and more data, uh, and and we have used that all of us for for decades now, either you know speech recognition, uh, OCR scanning is basically since the early 2000s every single piece of ocr scanning software out there is based on neural network um the uh, the, the 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 top engine in uh, in chess uh is based on neural network um you know, it has been trained that this is a good move this is a bad move this is a good move this is a bad move and the chess engine has learned that what is new uh, is, is that now we have gotten to a point where we have specialized hardware to do this and we have specialized hardware at scale in the cloud um, and the whole reason that that nvidia is now a trillion dollar company is because they happen to be the one that is providing the hardware to do uh, to run these at at this point, massive, massive uh, neural networks, and and we had a a a, a period uh, where you know neural network the the word because it was already used in the nineties, then you know people get tired of it, and suddenly it was known as machine learning, uh, and 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 then we kind of got tired of 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 machine learning, so now it's AI. But it's in reality, it's the same exact technology. 
it's it's a matter of of it has been scaled to uh, to a a trillion number based hundreds of trillions of parameters inside inside the network but in reality it's the exact same uh, functionality the reason is the what's different now is that instead of you know in the case of OCR, where we trained them, okay, here's now we, we we print something with this font, we print something with this font, and we print something with this font. We know all these are A, so we we pull in the scanner and tell the network to learn this is an A. That now we have taken basically we, uh, OpenAI and other companies uh, have taken you know all the text they could find on, on, on the internet that supposedly was not under a limited license and fit that that into the to the massive network as a learning uh learning data set um and so, so and and, and uh. that is what we have now aka chat gpt so so what is actually doing the way it, it it's doing is that you can you, you can ask it Basically, you can ask the the neural network, the, the the engine, the AI. You can ask it one question, and that is, "What is the next word?" That is the only question you can ask it. Uh, so, so if if you give an input uh, text, let's say, "The thing that drives a, uh, the thing that makes a car move is the," and then you you ask it, "What is the next word?" It might answer engine because that is the most likely word that will show up in that uh, with 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 that input, and then you can turn around. So okay, now I I I I feed it the word it just gave me. I feed that back into the in, into the neural network. So okay, then what is the most likely word after this? And and it kept building text. Uh, on on top of this, then there's a lot of control logic. Say, okay, when do we reach a stop condition? Um, like a, a simple stop condition is if it starts repeating itself. You can you can it can they, it, those uh, um, networks can very very easily get into a well the the next thing is the, the same thing I just said. Uh, and and so the logic around the network will detect that we have reached the stop condition. Then you know, so there's no more text to generate. Um, but that that is in reality what we have. The, the the amazing thing that that is in this is that because the the the, the learning data set has been so massive, and 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 the network itself is so massive. So so, so GPT four. They have not really announced how big it is officially and how much hardware is running, but it sounds like it has to run on at least 16 H100 GPUs from NVIDIA, which they cost a whopping $42,000 a piece. And, and, and they are bundled with 200 gigabytes of memory each. Uh, so it, it's, it's a staggering amount of, of, of compute power and, and memory uh that is is needed to run these things but when it comes down to it then it's it's just a engine that can predict the next word but it's it kind of it, it's interesting the way you're putting it eric because you're keeping it very um reactive and the fear that so many people have is that it will become proactive yeah um, the, the, so so it, it in in something that so so there's the there's the scary part. There's only one scary part here. That is, is that really how our brains work? Is is that is that uh, are our brains produce something as simple as just being able to predict the next word? Uh, I think that's a scary part. I don't see the scary part uh, that because this is just a predictive technology. There's no there's no conscience. There's no there's no no concept of I, even though it you can you can, from a text perspective, you can trick it into uh, answering like it has an, a a concept of I, but it it doesn't. Each each run, so each time you ask for the next token, is a reset. So you feed what you got back into it, 
and then you get the next token and then the hardware is reset and then somebody else's next prediction goes on so so these massive machines that are, are executing the, the the network a million times a second it's you know it's your request your request your request your request and there's no connection between them so there's no state the only state there is 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 the text you put back into it the next time you ask for the next word uh so so so, so this is not ai uh that is not intelligence it it's it's very clever text prediction uh but but it it, it there's no conscience there's no uh, no reasoning there's no uh, anything like that the only thing there is is the ability to say what with giving this input this will be the next word when you package that into all sorts of situation we can get also all uh, also and and you guys are gonna gonna show examples of that later you can get all sort of super cool use cases out of this but it's not something that will take over the world uh it, it, it it's 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 just a it's I, I I sometimes I compare this with going all the way back to the 80s. Um, I had a, a home computer with a spell check. Right, the first spell check application that came out, uh, and that was like matching, right? Why? How can the computer now know all words and know how to spell them? Uh, and and then you your know, spell check got smarter. We got. Um, we got pseudo grammar check, and then we have. I use something called Grammarly all the time that that helps me write, and and I I just see what we see now as the next natural step on something that basically started with spell check in the eighties. Interesting. You need to quit saying all the way back in the eighties. <laughs> Some of us <laughs> take offense to that. <clears throat> it's interesting what you're saying about it because. Um, my husband, who is in tech, and I, we get in arguments all the time. He thinks that it's going to lead to World War III. And I just say it's going to disrupt the job world, that it won't, we won't end up losing jobs, but some jobs will be lost, but the other opportunities will exist. And so um, I tend to look at things with rose colored glasses on anyhow, though. But um, this is an argument that we have all the time. And this is an argument I see people having on, um, you know, news and information shows as well. No, no, no. But but so here's the thing. So so I, I, on purpose, I mentioned the uh, the OCR stuff, right? Because that's a, a network working on a totally different data set. It's not working on text, right? It's working on images. Mm -hmm. uh, so so. The fact that we can now produce these huge neural networks will, at some point, somebody, or there's probably already uh, multiple companies that are trying this, will, will, will build something else that might closer resemble a, 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 a trying to simulate a, a mind. Uh, but that is not what we have now. We might have the hardware to. to to try it out at some point uh, very soon. But what we have now is just stupid text prediction, which because of the massive amount of learning data it, it, it's in, it 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 somehow actually get it, get it right most of the time, which is you know the magic part, the amazing part. Uh, but 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 it's still super stupid. You you ask it what is the next word and and what they have in order for it not to be totally predictable then uh, they they have these things where if it, it like the, you get a list of these are the these are the x number of most uh the the the, res, the next word with highest probability but then sometimes it choose to uh, instead of taking the top one it takes the second one just to no mix it up um uh, but but it's it's still just predicting the next word uh, every single time okay so um i think belinda cheers eric that was very good that mm -hmm. was a very good explanation uh maybe kind of think about it in a different way 
Uh, Belinda, do you want to show a little bit about Copilot? Um, well, not co I'm not doing Copilot. I'm going to do um, Microsoft Chat Enterprise. Um, I think um, Christoph was going to show Copilot, I think. Yeah. OK, Christoph, do you want to show a little bit about Copilot? <laughs> yeah, I can. So let me just share the screen. You should see the code. Can you see the code? Uh, nope. Not yet. Eric, I'm digging the little curl on the top of your head. You should see the code. Oh, no, now. Eric, Christoph. Sorry, Christoph. I'm sorry, Eric. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened it. today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not my fault. Okay, yep, I it. don't. Yeah, I don't know who of you were uh, were on the uh, directions in US, uh, North America, and Freddie was showing from stage how easy it is now to write the code. Uh, to be honest, I told him that it's not how you should pre uh, present it. So maybe a little about GitHub Copilot. Uh, in general, this is the paid service. To be honest, I don't know what is the price. I think around twenty dollars per month, something like that, if not less. Um, and what it does, it's help the developers to do developer development faster. Um, but you shouldn't think about it as something which will develop for you. I mean, this is the co-pilot, not the the pilot, as someone uh, someone said. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I'm thinking about it like it's a junior developer sitting with you. I mean, you can give that person some tasks, uh, but don't expect that everything will be exactly as you expecting. Uh, so that's why like I think is uh, it's helpful. It's not perfect yet. Uh, let me uh, show you how it works. Uh, and that's a real project which I have here. So um, uh, so let's see what it will do. See, this is the uh, uh, co-pilot which is trying to help me a little. It thinks that okay, I have a field which is called web shop order. So it thinks that I should also have a field which is called webshop order number. To be honest, I don't need such field, but uh, uh, but in general, that's trying to help me and and write everything for me uh, for that based on the code which I have. And you can see that it's already adding me some prefixes, uh, next number. It's even think that okay, if it's a number, that should be a code twenty not something else. And uh, you can also see that, OK, it's trying to help me with the prefix, which I'm using here, but with the caption is already removing this prefix. So uh, if I would need such field, that's pretty much easy. I can just click the tab and that's how I easy add the field. Right? Pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, straightforward. As I said, OK, in this case, I didn't need such field, but uh, uh, that's just an example. Uh, I also would like to put the same field. Let, let's say that I need to put that field and then let's put it here. So let's see if it will already try to help me. Oh, OK, it's see that I have a web, web shop order. So it also tried to add me the field uh, uh, field which we just created. And this uh, gray one means that it's not added yet. If I will just click a, a, click a tab, that will uh, that will work. You can see that it's thinking that it should be editable false. Makes sense. And it's already creating a tooltip, adding the application area here in this case. So pretty much that's easy just to add the, the field and um, just in in just a few seconds if you really need such field. Um, Christoph, can yeah. can I step back and ask a question? So for yeah, sure, a non sure. 
a non-BC developer like me. So Copilot is actually helping you create custom AL code? Yes. But uh, uh, so okay. it, it's not perfect, right? It's uh, uh, it's not working like 100% as it should. Uh, but that's also because it doesn't have so much to learn as I heard. So it's all uh, on learning on the uh, on the repositories which are public and on GitHub. We don't have so many of them, right? Uh, uh, but it's getting better and better and it's also learning on what you are writing. So um, as I said, it's rather like a help. Not that I would trust doing everything uh, or any, uh, everything what is doing. Uh, one of my friends uh, was, oh, see, for example, it it sees that, okay, there is no number. It should be probably with the uh, with the dot, right? It forgot about it. So, so going back to how I explained this, so, so wherever Christoph puts the cursor, the the source code above this is getting sent to the text prediction and say what is what is the most likely next word field then what is the most likely next and I actually token or that would be a parenthesis what is the most likely next or that would be a number and so on and and that is what becomes the 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 gray section here so it has no concept of that it the field name it just suggested inside another file was you know dot it it doesn't know it's a field. It just again, this is text prediction. Um, and surprisingly good text prediction, but it's still just text prediction. Uh, I will also tell you like this whole code which you see here. In fact, it was generated with just a few clicks. Because uh, when uh, I started to write like uh, I don't know if I, you know, this is living project, so let me just only copy it to to some notepad just <laughs> just for for my sake. Uh, let's just try what it will do. Okay, ship to name. You 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 can you can also check it here because I will just put it here uh, and hope you can, still can see it. Mm. Let's put here. Okay. Uh, let's try to generate this one more time. So let's. Okay. Next one. And you can see it's just as it's just adding the new fields. I just don't need to add anything like that. That's a junior work, right? <laughs> so, so in fact, I would need to just write everything uh, what is here. Uh, oh, now it's just stopped helping me. So let's go back and try. Okay, and so on, so on, right? So um, I think in this case, it's just showing one line. At sometimes it was showing me like the whole whole bunch of this code uh, in one go. But uh, um, so so in such uh, in such uh, uh, task, it's pretty much uh, nice because. I know what I want to do, so it's not thinking uh, 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 thinking um, uh, for me. It's just helping me to write it faster. But I also uh, uh, one friend of mine, one developer, which was, which is using it, uh, he's seen the whole function which was generated uh, uh, for him, and he said on the first look it was okay. But when he tried to test it and write and check everything, that was pretty much crap. <laughs> it was not a, a AL at all, right? So it was rather like taken from another language. And sometimes I see also such, uh, such uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, suggestions which I'm not seeing it as uh, the best ones. There is so, also. So, oh, go ahead. Uh, there's also because that's the first version of Copilot. Now they also added something which is called a Copilot X. I don't have it here, uh, 
Uh, but on BC Tech Days, uh, uh, one person, uh, Dimitri Katson, was showing it. Uh, so the nice uh, part of this more advanced one is that it can uh, it can such it can explain you what the code is doing. So it just you you can write explain me, and it's just showing you everything what is what this part should do and even try to find the small mistakes in the code. Um, so that's the, the let's say uh, that's the direction where it's going, but uh, I would say it's not perfect yet. Uh, no, no. Yeah. So, so so the 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 problem here is that we have we have isolated islands uh, of of technology because it, as as an end user, why would I want the computer to suggest me code that is wrong? Like the the dot was missing. How? Why would I uh, want the computer to suggest me something that cannot compile? Uh, so at some point, all these technologies need to work together. So we have something that is checking whatever something is right, is if it's compilable and 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 so on. Um, but but that system is totally not working with the with the copilot. Uh, but 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 they should right. It 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 basically should be so that if you're in a place, either the compiler should tell these are the op possible options you have in this case and send them to uh, to the AI to to select the most likely one. And then when when stuff comes back from the AI, it should be fed down into uh, in 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 into the compiler to figure out is is the is this valid uh, is this valid code do we even want to show it to the user and so on so we are still in a very very early stage of 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 doing this if you're programming Python if you're programming uh, a JavaScript it's pretty good uh, AL is there are use cases but but I have turned it off again I I find this too. The, there's way more noise than there's actually signal uh, after the novelty has kind of worn off. There yeah. are a couple of questions out there. Um, David Ruse wanting to know if that it's beta you're showing and what does Copilot X cost? Oh, I don't know how much uh, Copilot X costs, and I think now you can only register to to get access to it. So it's not like a so it's uh, private preview right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I cannot uh, like when I start using Copilot. To be honest, I see it very useful. Like uh, for, uh, but it, you need to um, get used to it because it's sometimes giving you suggestions. Sometimes it's not working exactly with the snippets, uh, or when you're trying to to read, it's sometimes making some noises, as, as uh, Eric said. But to be honest, in most cases, it's helping me to do it faster. Uh, uh, but as I said, I'm treating it not like something which will think uh, think uh, 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 for me. It's just like helping to write faster. Right. So that that's why I was disagreeing on what was shown on the. Uh, on the direction because now it was like oh everyone can write the code no it's still not like that and it will never be like that uh, uh, have have common uh, let's say understanding on that right so it will help developers if someone is a bad developer it will learn from the bad code exactly so so uh, that that can be the the big problem, right? Yep. Um, thanks for sharing that. Uh, I think we're gonna go to Kristen next. Kristen actually has Copilot in BC, so it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. All right. Well, I was so excited about Kristoff's because I was like, in my mind, I want to be a developer. Can I go in there and be like, create me a table with the custom field on the customer table and da da da? You know, like now KB is telling me I won't be able to do that. So, so there's another tool where you can do that. Remember? <gasps> yes. 
Yes, there is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, let's let's take a look at Copilot and Business Central. And first off, it's in it's in uh, preview right now. So to activate it, you have to go into feature management. And then it's this one right here. Uh, feature preview, create AI powered product descriptions with Copilot. It looks like it's going to be automatically enabled. Um, Q4 of 2023 here, so we'll see if that happens. I've gone ahead and enabled it. There is a little learn more here, which takes you to the Microsoft website, and it gives you a little bit more information about what exactly this feature is doing and trying to help you help you with. So let's take a look uh, at can, this. Can, can I interject a small comment here? Mm -hmm. Copilot. Is is just Microsoft's chosen label for for the same technology. Uh, it, it that that's GitHub came up with the first GitHub Copilot, and then uh, Microsoft has decided that whenever they slap uh, AI into something, it's going to be labeled Copilot. Um, so so it, it's 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 the same technology. It's not a a a special. Other thing is just Microsoft label for the same thing. Back to you, Kristen. Got it. Thanks, Eric. So the the environment I'm in here, the company I'm in is 285 Diecast. This happens to be my 12 year old's Hot Wheels company that is also um, integrated with Shopify. So he put all his cars out here, his, his inventory out here, um, and that's what we're going to be working with. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to open one of these item cards and off to the right here in the fact box is where um, where the marketing text is now showing. So without it enabled, this is not here. I'm going to go ahead and just click on create with Copilot. Now, based on the description, maybe the item number, different things like that, if you're using item attributes, it's going to put in a marketing description. This description then also syncs back with Shopify. So my 12 year old now can on the fly create this marketing text instead of having to go Google, you know, the item number and grabbing it from the Hot Wheels website, he can make it a little bit unique of his own, go ahead and create it with Copilot. That's pretty cool. Yeah, stuff like that is one of the hardest thing to do is write a lot of that text and that blurb mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Show me what's in the item description field. It's it's exactly what you see over here. No, this says seven. The other one says six. This oh. is seven. This is VI two. Yeah. Five, five, five. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's no, 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 there's no, exclamation mark. The exclamation point. Yeah. Oh. And that, yeah, that's oh, an that's exclamation just, point. Oh, that's just my eyesight. I thought it was. <laughs> ah, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I'll go ahead and hit, hit edit, Eric, here. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger so everybody oh, can go. see it. There Ooh, not that big. That's way too big. Um, But uh, say? here we go. And we can we can format it to be okay. Maybe we want a tagline and a paragraph. It needs a little bit more information, like item attributes, which I'm not using right now to do that. Um, so, yeah, it it obviously isn't going to work here without the item attributes in there. But uh, Microsoft has demoed this before up on stage, and it's been like a two paragraph thing I've seen where it comes up with, comes up with the description. So. So, so create an item attribute called uh, um, game inspired or something like that. <laughs> How about model? Oh shoot, you know, I don't have any so, of this stuff. Set. This is so brilliant because it. I mean, I know in theory this doesn't have anything to do with ERP, which is the foundation of 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 DC. But I mean, the value that this brings. The people that need this, I'm telling you, that's a whole new, mm -hmm. that's a whole new ball game. You don't have to have values on a text attribute. You can just type something. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it wasn't letting me. Let's see if it'll. Perhaps your it's son just... has you locked down. But, well, I might. No, I mean, it should. Just, just type. I there was joking. Go. I was there joking. It's working. There it's working. Um, and the color. One more with the color. Yeah, let's do color. I like that one. <laughs> On the fly demos. We all love these, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this all right. Is let's go formal. back to create with Copilot here, so we can just click that button. No, look at that. We're getting a lot more. Let me go ahead and edit that so we can see that. But this is what I was talking about. Like, it can give you so much more information just by utilizing attributes. Whether you're an experienced racer, like you know, you're gonna open it's it and vivid play with red it. color. It stands out from the crowd. So, so, so again, because it's just predicting the next word, it is it doesn't really have a concept of maybe there is no proper next word. So it, you know, it hallucinates, right? It just comes up with stuff. Uh, well, and I guess in in marketing, that's great, right? But, uh, I don't know. I mean, this this last part right here. So take the wheel and hit the road for an unforgettable experience. Whoo! That makes me want to get in this car. <laughs> sure. I love it. Yep. Well, so that you know, that's I, I what think I had to show. A, I think it's just the first step. They needed to add something um, uh, to BC with the co-pilot, but I think we will see more and more places where uh, where such features will be added. And I think we also will be able to add it because, uh, I mean, developers will be able to add and, and create uh, own places where we will be able to use the co-pilot. Because somehow some of the code is already public, <laughs> not everything, but yeah, if, if you will go to the system app, you already can see some uh, some uh, functions there uh, for it. Not finally done, but more and more. All right, Belinda, what do you got for us? Okay. And then I think what we'll do after Belinda shows is just try and wrap it up with kind of going around the room and um, asking about how you see this changing how we interact with BC um, for end users and developers. So that'll be the last question. So keep start thinking about that and then Belinda, take it away. Yeah, I have three topics and do two demos. They're short and I'm gonna go fast. So the first one just announced last week was Bing Chat Enterprise. And this is cool. This is Microsoft's version basically of Chat GPT. And I have this window pulled up because if you already have an E3 or an E5 license, you get it included. Um, and then there's some business standard and premium. So you got to check to see what exactly you get. So you could go to bing.com forward slash chat. And I went in and I said, what should I tell people about the Bing Chat Enterprise? And this is what it came up with that, you know, um, and, and I'm going to read um, the underlying, well, I'm going to just read this little paragraph to you because it does explain exactly what I was going to say, probably in less words than I would have said it. Um, Bing Chat Enterprise is an AI powered chat system that keeps your work discussion secure. So that's really important. It is designed to facilitate businesses as they delve into the world of generative AI. Bing Chat Enterprises has business focused data privacy and governance controls. With Bing Chat Enterprise, chat isn't saved. Microsoft can't view a customer's employee or business data and customer data isn't used to train the underlying data models. If Bing Chat Enterprise is turned on for the organization and they have an eligible Microsoft 365 license, employees can access Bing Chat Enterprise from bing.com forward slash chat and the, uh, and the Microsoft Edge sidebar using their work account. So I wanted to share with you that the because the difference between this and chat GBT for, for businesses is your data is not being tallied or pulled by Microsoft. It is staying secure 
and uh, it is not used to train underlying models, which is one big fear that a lot of people have. Now, I said I had three topics. So topic number two, of course, I have to talk about Power BI. If you know me, you know that's true. Now, Power BI has had AI in it for a really long time, actually since its inception. One of the things that it's had since its inception is something called insights in the cloud, where it would look at your data and find uh, would find trends and outliers to those trends, and they called it insights. So when chat uh, or Copilot comes out for Power BI and they're not letting anybody have access to the preview yet, you want to get a Microsoft employee mad, ask them if you could get early access still, or, or when is it coming out? They'll start beating you. But the difference between that and chat uh, or then insights is I can go in and tell it something specific that I want to see. Don't just go and do a general look at the data and use AI and algorithms to find trends and outliers. Instead, go in and say, hey, um, I want to see specifically of all my data, I want to see how my sales is compared to my budgets for customers in this posting group. And so that kind of specific thing, it'll actually build a report for you that's focused on that. So that's exciting. So to give you an idea what it that would be like, that experience, I'm going to move on to topic three and demo two. In Power Apps, Canvas Apps, there is Copilot out there right now. So this is, uh, I'm just in regular Power Apps, and this is where I can use um, Copilot right here. So if I wanted to create um, a list of uh, maybe questions that, um, or maybe, um, I don't know, um, how about just a contact list? Uh, I'm going to do something easy right here. Uh, I want a contact list of people who attend Mix It Up. Uh, mix it up. So um, create an app that tracks attendee information for webinars. And now I just go ahead and click enter and it's going to start building it out. You can see Copilot here on the right and it's starting to build it out. It's going to use Dataverse as its database, um, of course, because it's Power Apps and Dataverse is part of Power Apps. Now it is not only trying to create um, figure out how the app should be. It is actually creating sample data so that I can use it. And so here is my sample data. So I can see an ID. I can see name, email, phone, registered, attended. Now, um, I, I'm i okay with that. So, um, well, actually, I want to add a date. Add date added to the list. Whoops. I switched keyboards and now I'm using a keyboard where I actually can see the letters on it. The one I usually use, I have typed away all the white on it and now I can't type worth a darn. So um, so now it's going through and it's at updating what I wanna see. And the Power BI experience will be very similar to this that I could tell it what it is specifically that I'm wanting to see. And then now, um, here is my uh, app information, and it's literally building the app for me. I don't even have my hands like on my mouse, even though that is my resting place for my hand. Okay, and I'm going to skip that, move that over, and so and close that out so that we can zoom in a little bit. This is the app that it created, and by the way, this is eventually, I think, going to replace this three-screen app or you could just add a new one. You've got the gallery on the side. So if I wanted to add Kim, for example, I could just come up and click on new. And um, Kim, is it C? Kim C? Kim Co. at getyournewview.com. And did she attend? Yeah, she signed up for it. I'm gonna, I think that'll wait till it's on its own. And then Kim, Congleton registered, yes, and add that. Oh, I can't save, I got an error. I got to put in this, so I'll put in 1000. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Now there's, oh, <laughs> I got carried away. Click, 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 click. So now that I need to fix those, so I'll delete all of my duplicates. Yeah, this is a fully functioning app and I didn't do a darn thing except type in a couple of questions. So um, this is a little more Eric than looking for the next, um, looking for the next word, but it is asking for my input in using the experience of the situation and things that it learned to create what it thinks that I want. And so, um, but yeah, so I'm excited to see Copilot and all the applications come in and start making work and life easier for us. That was fast, wasn't it? That was cool. Yeah. 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 That was very fast. I've tried it with Power Automate Belinda, but I can't, I, and I put in there specifically that I want something for BC and it still just starts with Dataverse. So it's mm -hmm. not quite there, but it's getting there for BC stuff. Um, so to wrap it up, I think we've got like eight minutes. Obviously, sometimes this goes over, but for anybody that has to stop at four, why don't we just kind of go around the room and in your words, and the reason I asked this question, because it was kind of interesting, I was at Directions as well, and I was wandering around the, um, the uh, reception, and it was interesting to just to hear people talking in groups about Copilot after that presentation that Freddie did, and I don't, I don't, I didn't recognize the partner, but he was saying in the next year he's going to fire all of his developers and use Copilot. So obviously that is not reality, but from your guys' perspective, what does Copilot, what does AI, ChatGTP, what does that mean in the world of Business Central for end users and developers? So, Belinda, we'll start with you. Um, I think it will um lower the bar of in of entry for entry into it especially not not the al piece i mean if you're not if you're not a developer you shouldn't be playing in that if you're new to developing and you want to be a developer good use it but for the bulk of the users i think it just it just lowers the the barrier of entry so that they can um start learning some things on their own it's going to take a while i think before um, I think it'll be a great starting point for people, and then they're going to use it to learn and do development on their own. I don't know that it'll how long it'll be. It could be very short, could take a long time, it could be never, that it gets completely exactly the way you want it, because there would have been additional things I would have added to that little app that I built in um, just a couple of minutes. But um, it, it still, I think it'll be a while. And, you know, there was a company in India that fired all their employees and is using like uh, chat GPT to answer their questions. I have a feeling they won't stay in business long because I don't think people are ready for that yet. Um, I just don't I just don't think they will be. OK, uh, Christoph, what are your thoughts? I hope we will not be fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just kidding. I don't think so. It would be like that. But uh, th that's why, uh, you know, I I don't like the approach like that because uh, what what you said, uh, because uh, we should know the limitation also of the technology. Right. So uh, uh, even if it's it's just a help. So I think it will just help us to uh, do less mistakes. It's uh, in terms of business central and inside functionality, it will help user to uh, make better decision and also do less work, which is like repeatable work. So that's uh, that uh, what I think it will uh, it will go. Not that it will replace anyone. Right? It will just uh, allow us to focus on something, uh, something different and something something which we don't have time, for example, now. OK. Uh, Kristen. You know, I'm with KB on this. I don't know that it's going to be replacing a lot of jobs, um, but I don't want to give Microsoft too many ideas about how I could see it working in BC. But for example, what if someone went to the global search and they were like, 
void a check for vendor A and it pulls up, you know, the vendor or the check let the check ledger entries and it's already filtered by that vendor. And then all they have to do is, you know, or like void check number 1000 and then it like pulls up the window to void it or enter a purchase invoice for American Express GL account. Like what if you could verbally say this stuff or type it out and, and it just does it? I mean, it may, maybe it's not too far fetched of an idea. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you know, I think it depends on the preferences. I will, I prefer to click and the same. I prefer to talk with the uh, real human instead of chat. I hate talking with the chats. So, so I think there will be quite a lot of people like me, which. <laughs> So we'll, we'll want to click it instead of just saying, oh, void me a check or something. Yeah. But back to that, Kristen, that might actually open up job opportunities for people who have a hard time typing or can't do that if they could, you know, go in and do the same job. Absolutely. So that's an interesting, interesting thought. I like it. Accessibility, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eric, you're on mute. Eric's going to tell us why it's not possible. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I did a video on how you do that. So, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so, so, so there's nothing really new in that. Uh, uh, Microsoft could implement it tomorrow if they wanted to. It has nothing to do with, with this per se. Uh, that's much simpler uh, to when you write something to to figure out what is the intent and what is the entities that you are you're addressing with the intent and so on there there's been services for that for ages uh, but one thing we haven't mentioned and actually we just want to show you one last demo here in the last 30 seconds uh can you see my screen so yes. so this is back to code uh this is copilot x uh so so the next generation so in this case i have a piece of code on the left side. And you know what? This looks rather complicated, right? Uh, there's the, it, 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 you look at it and say, huh, I'm not sure I understand this, but what if you could right click on it and say, uh, explain this. Oh, now we get it over here. The code above is a local procedure called get field. Uh, hang on, oh, stop, 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 stop. Get type of field. It takes a record called API page field uh, Hogard and returns a JSON object. The procedure first declares three variables, blah, blah, blah. So you get an explanation of so so the ability to read is 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 actually quite interesting. Um and I you know get, let's mark a different one and say um copilot explain this so it's reading it and then saying. Hey, this is what's happening. There you go. Uh, I find that uh, right now perhaps more useful than it's trying to write code for me. Uh, and after you read it, you say, OK, let's create some documentation for, uh, for this piece of code. So the ability to read is, is also quite interesting. Anyway, uh, I think we are only on the uh, on, on the big beginning of, of the whole AI thing. I think we will see a lot of uh, a lot of cool uses, uh, like the what what Krista mentions, and 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 yeah, this is this is only the beginning. Uh, right now, there is a hardware limitation, and. Uh, and NVIDIA is, is looking for the next trillion dollar to uh, make sure that that hardware limitation doesn't exist in the future. I almost feel like we should have this conversation like once a quarter. I was um, just I was just putting that in the chat. Like yeah. we need to do this and, and watch the progression. Yeah, because I think it'd be pretty interesting um, like once a quarter. So, no, no, but, I, so, but, so what we see right now is the, yeah. uh, no, Classic technology. We got something new, exciting. We we throw it everywhere and see where it sticks, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I think that in you know in 2024 we will have less yeah. co-pilot 
than we yeah. have in 2023 because some of the places doesn't really make any sense it does not add value and then yeah. you know we 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 learn how to, uh, to use this uh like do we have spell check when you type in uh, in the item number field no because that doesn't really make sense but we can have spell check while we type in the item descriptions or stuff like that uh we we, we need to figure out how to use this technology yeah and i think um, it would be cool to see like use cases where people actually start using it for real i want to share for one last chat based on the conversation i've been having i'm going to go to um bing chat will bing chat and chat GPT um, uh, create loss of jobs. Drum roll. No, oh, but but there any no any sorry any technology is moving the workforce around. That that is you know, the yeah. Natural, I, that's exactly uh, what I. That's exactly what I think. I think more the job job uh, descriptions and jobs that uh, that we don't even imagine right now will be created in its place. This says there's no clear answer to whether chat uh, chatbot AI jobs will increase or decrease. However, widespread adoption of AI could ultimately increase labor productivity and boost global GDP by 7% annually over a 10-year period, according to Goldman Sachs. With automation, there will be a large net increase in jobs, and about two-thirds of the jobs transformed by automation will become higher skilled. The other third um, becomes lower skilled. Policymakers need to act in the interest of all society to maximize economic gains and minimize the potential negative impact on workers. Although reports are revealing the massive job loss that we are going to witness due to the penetration of AI and robots, there is still a ray of hope. Chatbots are sure to display several employers from the basic jobs, but they can be upskilled to handle other tasks that demand better human skills. Okay, I love the fact that it put ray of hope in there. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I was I was gonna say, of course, this is what AI would say, right? This is what AI would say. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna destroy the world AI? No, yeah, not me. Yeah. yeah. By the way, just down the road from me, they're building a new Amazon distribution center. And there are no windows in it because it will have almost no human beings in it. They'll have some. And I know that's not AI, but if you think about like warehouse automation, factory automation, robotics, um, you know, automated pick robotic stuff, I think there's a parallel there. Uh, we're just seeing it come into knowledge jobs where we're used to seeing it come into physical jobs. Yeah. So yeah, we'll 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 keep that uh, so, gentle person's back, Belinda. For we'll we'll put it for three years down the road and see. So <laughs> there, there are there are no windows because the only people in there are IT and robot repair people, and they don't exactly. like windows. Okay. I mean that's true. Exactly. My light doesn't go on all day. Yeah. I mean, I'm but just they, it really is. Window. It's incredible. It's incredibly automated what they're doing with uh, you know yeah. picking robots, picking and fulfillment robots. I think there's a parallel there. But us knowledge workers have never seen this happen before, so I think we're going to be the last to acknowledge it coming. <laughs> Oh, um, I just put a, oh, that was, uh, uh, Ray, I didn't mean to that to be a smirking icon. I meant for it to be a maybe icon. So I'm not smirking at you. I'm saying maybe. Sorry. That's just awesome. wanted to clarify that. I wasn't being aggressive. I know right. the rule, Kim. No HR, right? I know the rule. Yes. One rule. We have one rule. Don't make us have to have an HR department. Um, Eric, I think you posted something in there. You posted your book. No, no, I posted I posted a video that shows the functionality that Kristen Perfect. was asking for. OK, cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. This was uh, a lot of fun and uh, I'm surprised we only went five minutes over. So that's amazing. And uh, hopefully we'll revisit this conversation uh, in a couple months and see what else is out there. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Princess Belinda, have a good trip. Thank you.